Railroad flat cars are a convenient option to replace existing deteriorating bridge structures on low volume roads. Two or more flat cars are typically placed side by side to achieve the desired bridge width. Utilizing railroad flat cars as a bridge allows for rapid construction and greater cost savings compared to traditional practice. These benefits make them an attractive solution for rural communities in Indiana, as well as other states. Railroad flat cars has specific structural features that make them great candidates in bridge construction. They are typically constructed with one main girder running longitudinally down the middle of the car and two exterior girders on either side of the main girder. The longitudinal load carrying elements of a typical railroad flat car are the main girder, exterior girders, and stringers. When utilized as a bridge, the main box girder carries the majority of the traffic load. Railroad flat cars are designed to be supported at the locations where the wheels are connected to the flat car. They perform better as bridges if they are supported at the wheel trucks. The wheel trucks are located a few feet from either end of the flat car. A two-part research study was funded by the Indiana Local Technical Assistance Program and performed by researchers at Purdue University. The two phases included field testing and laboratory testing of railroad flat car bridges. The following video will discuss the experimental tests conducted along with the research findings. The first phase of the research focused on field visits, instrumentation, and controlled load testing of existing flat car bridges in Indiana. The objectives of Phase 1 regarding highway bridges made of flat cars were to develop a load rating procedure, develop inspection guidelines, and develop guidelines for the acquisition of railroad flat cars. A representative sample of 25 bridges in Indiana were chosen to perform field visits and further investigate the geometry and common construction of rail car bridges. Although there are many types of railroad flat cars, most used as bridges in Indiana are constructed with one main girder, two exterior girders, and a system of stringers. Stringers vary in size and shape and are located between the main girder and each exterior girder. This type is considered a typical railroad flat car. Other bridges observed in the field have two large I-shaped girders that run down the middle of the car. Spacing between these girders can be small, up to one foot, or large, about three to six feet. When there is a large spacing, the cars will not typically have any stringers, but will have large transverse floor beams between the main girders. Seven existing railroad flat car bridges in Indiana were selected to instrument and load test. The selection was based on a railroad flat car bridge database provided by LTAP, as well as field visits conducted by the research team. The seven bridges varied in length, width, member size, longitudinal connection, and deck type. Strain gauges were used to measure the live load stresses in response to controlled load testing. Installation was focused on the longitudinal load carrying members, like the main girders, exterior girders, and stringers. Strain gauges were typically placed on each of these elements at mid-span, where the moment is at a maximum. The measured stresses included both the global response of the bridge as a system and the local response of individual elements. A series of controlled load tests were performed on each of the sample bridges. The tests were performed using tandem axle dump trucks provided by the county where each respective bridge was located. The load test typically consisted of driving the test trucks in three lanes, left, right, and center. Each bridge had three tests performed, the static park test, 
crawl tests and the dynamic test. The static park and the crawl test were performed at the three transverse load positions, whereas the dynamic test was only performed on the center line. Load rating guidelines were developed based on field instrumentation measurements. The goal of the guidelines was to develop procedures that were simple, yet accurately predicted the live load bending response of these bridges. Load rating procedures for a flat car bridge constructed with a composite concrete deck are discussed in the Phase 2 summary. Primary members are load rated based on global response, and secondary members are load rated based on local response. The load rating guidelines, including load rating examples, are provided through Indiana LTAP. A brief overview of the approach will be discussed herein. The main girders, those of which that carry the majority of the load on typical bridges, experience global bending due to live load moment. Bridges constructed with a composite concrete deck follow different procedures to determine the live load bending stress in primary members. These procedures will be discussed later in the video. The steps to predict the live load bending stress in these members begins with calculating the live load moment for a single lane loaded. This step is typically formed by assuming a beam line model of the bridge and computing the maximum live load moment produced by the design truck. Next, the live load moment is dispersed to each flat car by using a distribution factor. The lever rule can be used to reasonably and conservatively distribute live load moment between cars connected with a longitudinal connection. Comparisons of the distribution factor determined by field measurements and computed using the lever rule for the seven railroad flat car bridges provided reasonably good agreement. The moment within each flat car is then distributed to each primary member by the car distribution factor. Finally, this moment is resisted by an effective section. The effective section, which resists global live load bending for bridges with small exterior girders, consists of the main girder and stringers. For bridges with large exterior girders, the effective section consists of the entire railroad flat car. The secondary members, the stringers and exterior girders, experience local bending caused by individual wheel loads. A similar approach was developed to estimate the live load bending stress for secondary members based on local bending effects. Acquisition guidelines are presented in the video, Acquisition of Railroad Flat Cars for Use as Highway Bridges on Low Volume Roads. Inspection guidelines are presented in the video, Inspection of Railroad Flat Car Bridges on Low Volume Roads. It can be concluded that properly selected railroad flat cars are a suitable option to be used as low volume road bridges. The second phase of the research focused on laboratory testing of a railroad flat car bridge with two typical flat cars placed side by side. The construction and load testing took place at Bowen Laboratory at Purdue University. The objectives of phase two were Evaluate the behavior of bridges subjected to higher loads than applied during Phase 1. Demonstrate load path redundancy in bridges by simulating a fracture in a primary load carrying member. Calibrate and revise the proposed load rating guidelines developed in Phase 1. Other objectives of Phase 2 were to investigate the following. Load distribution within a single flat car load distribution with flat cars placed side by side, behavior effects of a composite concrete deck, behavior effects of a timber deck, shear live load response, and bending live load response. Each flat car obtained for this research study was approximately 56 feet long and 9 feet wide. They were typical railroad flat cars, each having a main box girder, two exterior girders, and four stringers between the main girder and each exterior girder. Deep and shallow transverse members 
are located throughout the length of the flat cars. The bridge was built as a simply supported, single span bridge with a span length of approximately 47 and a half feet and a total bridge width of about 21 and a half feet. The cars were spaced 12 feet on center creating a gap between the two flat cars of approximately two and a half feet. Pin and roller supports placed on concrete blocks were used to simulate the simply supported condition. The supports were located at the recommended wheel truck locations. A fully composite concrete deck was constructed to form a bridge system with the two flat cars. The objective was to utilize a simple design that also provided adequate load carrying capacity and distributed load throughout and between the flat cars. The design was based on the ASHTO LRFD bridge design specifications. The longitudinal steel reinforcement consisted of number 5 bars spaced at 12 inches on the top and bottom layers. The transverse reinforcement consisted of number 5 bars spaced at 10 inches on the top and bottom layers. Shear connectors were installed on the main girders and exterior girders to ensure composite action between the steel structure and the concrete deck. Twelve controlled load tests were performed on the bridge to aid in understanding the load distribution and the carrying capacity of the bridge system. The flat cars were load tested individually with no deck, a timber deck patch, and as a bridge system with a composite concrete deck. Load configurations included a point load and a wheel patch load to simulate a truck axle in different transverse locations at midspan. The total applied load ranged from 150 kips to 225 kips. Strain gauges were used to measure the live load stresses in response to controlled load testing. Strain gauges were installed near the supports, at the quarter points, and near mid-span. They were placed on the top and bottom flanges of select longitudinal members at these locations. The east car was more heavily instrumented to determine if the flat car behaved symmetrically. The strain gauge locations of the west car matched those on the east car to determine if the two flat cars displayed similar behavior. Rectangular rosette gauges were also installed to determine shear strains at specific locations. The rosettes were placed on the webs of the main girder and exterior girders on the east flat car. Two cross sections were instrumented, two feet from the support in the shallow section of the main girder and six feet from the support in the tapered section of the main girder. As a result of the experimental data, load rating guidelines were developed for bridges constructed with a fully composite concrete deck. These guidelines use the same basic equation as developed in Phase 1 to determine the live load stress in the primary members. The percent of moment distributed to each member depends on the member stiffness, the truck location, and the distance between adjacent flat cars. Local effects with a concrete deck can be neglected, therefore the stringers do not need to be load rated. Recommendations to determine live load shear force were based on measurements from the rectangular rosette strain gauges. Experimental data showed that it is conservative yet reasonable to assume that the webs of the main girder carry the shear force. This is valid for any deck type. Fractured tests were performed to address the issue of classifying railroad flat car bridges as containing fracture critical members. This issue arises due to the railroad flat car bridge being viewed as having only two primary load carrying members. The goal of the fracture test was to simulate a fracture in a main girder to investigate the ability of the bridge to redistribute loads and perform as a system after fracture. The composite concrete deck was in place during these tests. In order to induce a controlled brittle fracture, notches were made at the location of interest to create crack-like conditions. Then the section was cooled using liquid nitrogen to decrease the fracture toughness of the material. The bridge was then loaded at the notch location to create a fracture. 
The first fracture test consisted of fracturing the East Railroad flat car main girder at mid-span. The majority of the dead load once carried by the main girder was redistributed to the exterior girders in the fractured car and the main girder of the non-fractured car. The bridge was then point loaded at mid-span to 150 kips. About 50% of the live load was carried by the exterior girders in the fractured car and about 50% was distributed to the non-fractured car. The second fracture test simulated a worst case scenario with the main girder of each car fractured. This scenario, although highly unlikely, could occur if one main girder fractured but was not detected before the other main girder fractured. Therefore, a fracture was simulated in the west car main girder with the east car main girder still fractured. In other words, no repair splice was constructed. The bridge sustained a point load of 190 kips. Large deflections and yielding of the material was present at this point. However, the bridge demonstrated system redundancy and did not collapse. Based on the results of the first fracture test, procedures were developed to estimate whether the remaining longitudinal members provide sufficient capacity to carry traffic loads. The redundancy evaluation considers redistribution of dead load as well as live load after fracture occurs in one of the main girders. These loads are distributed to the remaining main girder and exterior girders similar to the load rating procedures. Experimental testing of the bridge in the laboratory resulted in the following key conclusions. Timber decking did not provide any substantial stiffness or load distribution within the railroad flat car. The composite concrete deck provided added stiffness, increased live load capacity, and provided excellent load distribution within a single flat car and between adjacent flat cars. Laboratory testing demonstrated that bridges constructed with typical railroad flat cars and a composite concrete deck will very likely have a load path redundancy and should not be labeled fracture critical. The exterior girders and main girders must be fully composite with a properly designed concrete deck for this statement to be applicable. The laboratory bridge was subjected to loads that far exceed typical truck traffic loads in the non-fractured and fractured state. With both main girders fractured, the bridge resisted a moment about four times the moment created by an HS20 design truck for a single lane loaded.